Um, hi guys, this is Amit and today I'm going to talk about a concept called dexterous algorithm. I'm going to talk about what the algorithm is. I'm going to talk about how the algorithm works. I'm going to talk about some real world problems in which you might co uh, consider implementing the dexterous algorithm. And I'm going to talk about what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of implementing this algorithm. And then maybe in a follow up tutorial, I would also like to cover, you know, how you can code the algorithm in Python. So let's get started. So Dijkstra's algorithm has been uh, named after its creator, who is a Dutch computer scientist called Edgar Dijkstra. So what the algorithm basically is, it allows us to find the shortest path between two nodes. So for example, if you are in the source node and you have many possible paths that you can take to reach the destination node, and you want to find out which path is the most preferable path for you, which path is the most desirable path for you, which path will ensure that you lead the most uh, efficient route, if you want all of those things, you might consider implementing Dijkstra's algorithm. So uh, what are some real world problems in which you might consider uh, applying a, a Dijkstra's algorithm? Maybe you are, have been given the uh, duty to do some routing configuration for packages. Uh, maybe there are many possible paths that your package can take, each path having its own associated costs with it. Uh, maybe you want to evaluate all of the costs to make sure uh, which is the optimal path for your package. Maybe you want all of that, so uh, that's when you might consider applying Dijkstra's algorithm. Uh, one other, prob uh, other real world problem is that maybe you are a service like Uber who wants to offer the optimal uh, route to its drivers to ensure that they reach their destination at the least possible time. Uh, that's when you might consider applying Dijkstra's algorithm. So I was going through uh, one of the blogs of Uber and this is what they have to say about Dijkstra's algorithm. They say that one simple example you can try at home is the Dijkstra's search algorithm. So even they want you to have like a fundamental understanding of Dijkstra's algorithm. But uh, however, this is also the, what they have to say about Dijkstra's algorithm. They say that whenever you want to apply the algorithm on top of an unprocessed graph, it is usually too slow. So yeah, just like any other algorithm, it also has its own pros and cons. We're going to get to that in a moment. Before that, I would also like to talk about another real world problem. Maybe you are in the medical scenario. Maybe you are a doctor who is very technical and you want to f and let's, let me just create a hypothetical situation. Maybe there is a virus which can take many possible paths to reach the heart and maybe you want to find out uh, what is the least possible time for uh, the, the virus will take to reach the heart. Uh, given that it is the most efficient it will maybe it will give you a uh, an understanding of how long that you have to prepare for this particular problem uh, so th these are just some of the examples uh, you know there are several other uh, real world problems in which you might consider applying Dijkstra's algorithm uh, before i uh, get into what are the disadvantages of applying uh, Dijkstra's algorithm let me just talk about a little uh, point that you need to understand so when we say that we want to find the shortest path, what does it actually mean? Uh, so in the real world scenario, we don't always associate distance with, uh, with the most preferable path. There could be a lot of factors that are at play. For example, there could be time. Maybe uh, if you are in the, uh, if you are like uh, directing traffic to a certain route, uh, we, maybe we want to ensure that the, uh, the condition of the road is good. Otherwise, it is not going to be an efficient or preferable path. There could be several other reasons. Uh, so yeah, so what we do is we associate cost with each path, which is basically a representative of all the problems. Uh, so what happens is Dijkstra's algorithm does not work very well whenever the cost of a path is negative. Now you may be wondering like why would a cost of a path be negative? Uh, does it even make sense? Uh, actually it does it makes a lot of sense uh, so in the real world there can be a lot of reasons why you might want to associate negative cost to a path for example maybe um, let's say if you want to move from place a to place b and distance wise maybe it is very uh, it is a short distance but maybe the conditions of the road uh, from point a to point b is so bad that it is going to inflict additional damage to your vehicle uh, Th then it is not a preferable path for obvious reasons right so that's when maybe you want to associate a negative cost to it so there could be like several other reasons why you'd want to do that so uh Dijkstra's algorithm does not work properly whenever the cost of a path is negative so yeah this is some of uh, these are some of the problems that Dijkstra's algorithm faces 
but however it is important for us to understand how dax's algorithm works properly it works very effectively in in a lot of other cases so we are going to see um, the implementation of it so before starting the um, video i made a little something so for uh, to help me explain the concept um, in a much easier way so uh, this is what we call the nodes or the vertex or the vertices okay so these are the nodes and what we have is these are called the edges or the paths right and what we have is uh, there is a certain cost associated with each path right the higher the cost is the least preferable the path is because you know it has a higher cost right common sense right and then what we have is uh, we are going to start from the source of we are going to start from node a so node a is our source node and we the main objective of our program is to reach uh, the destination node which is a node h right we have to find out which is the optimal route to reach uh, to point h from point a right and uh, since we are starting from a uh, node a the the cost that is uh, to reach point A is going to be zero because we are starting from point A, right? We are starting from node node A, so the cost to reach node A is going to be zero. And since we are just starting out, we don't know if there are any possible paths to reach other node. So initially, what we do is we assign infinity to all other nodes uh, because we don't know yet whether there are any possible paths to reach there, right? So we are gonna we're gonna see that how we will modify the cost as we move through the graph and the moment we find a possible path to, a, to each of the nodes we're gonna modify it. One thing to remember is that we're only going to modify the cost of reaching a node if it is lower than the existing node right this, that makes complete sense because why would you update it to a higher cost if you already know a more efficient way of reaching that node right for example if you find out that there is a way of reaching node c with the cost of five and if you if you happen to find another route to uh, reach node c with the cost of four that would completely make sense to modify that because you know you have actually found a more efficient way of reaching that node however if you find a route uh, to uh, reach node c with with a, a cost greater than five uh, it wouldn't make sense to modify that because you know you have already established a route which is more efficient than that right so yeah that is the simple rule of the game and that that is exactly what we're going to do and the other thing that we're going to do is uh, the moment we visit a node we are going to mark them as visited so if you if you say we have visited a node a we're going to mark node a as visited like this if you say we have moved to uh, node d we're going to mark node d as visited like this okay simple enough okay so let's get started so at the moment we are in node a right so we are going to mark node a as visited and now what you have to see is what are the directly connected nodes with node a like what are the list of possible paths that we can take what are the options that we have so as you can see that from node a we can either move to node b with a cost of three we can either move to node c with a cost of four we can either move to uh, node d with a cost of seven now these are the options that we have from node a so we have to, we what we want is we want to find the shortest path right so we are only going to take the path which has the least cost so the, the only thing that makes sense is to take this path uh, the path to node B because it has the lower cost right so we are going to move to node B right so we're going to mark node B as visited and one other thing is that the the cost this cost is going to ultimately change it is no longer infinity because we have ultimately found a path uh, a route to node B right so we are going to say that it is no longer infinity we have found a path to node B which has a cost of 3 right so we are going to modify that okay fair enough and now what we're going to do is we're going to see that uh, what are the options that we have from node b we can either move to node c and, or we can move to node f now what is important for us to understand is that uh, Dijkstra's algorithm does not allow for backtracking you cannot move to a node which has been previously uh, 
visited we can only move to a node which has not been previously visited right so these are the two options that we have we can either move to node c with a cost of one or we can move to node f with a cost of five the only thing that makes sense is to move to node c because it has a lower cost so we are going to move to node c we're going to mark node c as visited and then we're going to uh, modify the code or uh, modify the cost right so what is the cost going to be so we have already established that there is a route to node b which has a cost of three and then we can move to node uh, c from node b with a by experiencing an additional cost of one right so it is basically in order to move to node c we can actually uh, go there with a cost of three plus one right so three plus one is four i hope that makes sense okay so now what are the options that we have we can either move to node d with a cost of two or we can move to node f with a cost of six right okay so the only thing that makes sense is to go for the lower cost right so the lower cost is this one uh two so we're going to move to node d so we are going to say we have uh we're going to mark node d as visited and then we are going to modify the cost i'm gonna uh let you make a guess what the cost is going to be uh, so it is of course going to be 4 plus an additional 2 so it's gonna be 6 right okay fair enough and now what we have is we can from node D we can either move to node G with a cost of 6 or you can move to node E with a cost of 3 since uh, uh, moving to node E is a better option because it has a lower cost we're going to move to node E so we're going to mark node E as visited and we are going to update the cost that is needed to uh, move to that particular node which is 6 plus 3 which is 9 right uh, fair enough now now this is going to be interesting because now uh, what we can do is we can directly move to the destination node and we are gonna know that uh, um, it's got the cost is gonna be 9 plus 4 which is 13 right or what we can do is we can you know uh, go from uh, node E to node F and then go to node H what is going to happen is if you do that uh, the cost is going to be 9 plus 1 10 and then plus 8 which is going to be 18 uh, if you go if you want to uh, move from node e to node g what it's going to be 9 plus 3 is 10 12 and then 2 14 right and if you move from node e to node h directly what it's going to be the cost is going to be 9 plus 4 which is 13 right so as you can see that the most optimal decision is if we move directly to node h so we're going to mark node h as visited and then what we're going to do is we're going to update the value or uh, the update the cost what is the cost going to be the the cost is going to be what we have established uh, as what the cost that we have established to reach node e is 9 and then we have to experience an additional cost of 4 which is 13 so the cost of reaching h is uh, the cost of 13 right and this is basically the most optimal route that we can take to reach h that is the most optimal cost that is good that we sh can experience in order to reach to uh, destination node h from the source node a uh, if you don't just like if you don't uh, think about Dax's algorithm if you just want to experiment you know uh, of taking several other paths that you want and if you want to check it out you're going to see that ultimately this is in fact the most optimal route and that is why Dax's algorithm is very effective in in a lot of cases so guys that's all i wanted to explain in this video i wanted to explain the concept and do let me know in the comments if this video has helped you anyway and also do let me know if this video has helped you uh, no if if you're struggling with some of the concepts right if you're struggling with some of the concepts do let me know in the in the comments so that i can help you out with that and thank you so much for watching see you next time bye